talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Christian Harloff. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Collider Movie Talk. Fun show today. We're going to do a couple stories up top, but today is going to be all about you guys. We're going to do, we haven't done this in a little bit, so we're going to do, after our first two topics that we're going to cover, we want you guys to tweet in, and we're going to do an all Twitter episode of Movie Talk today. So head on over to Twitter, go to at Collider Video, at Ashley Mova, submit your questions. She's going to go through them, and we'll do a bunch of them in a little bit. Yes, also here, John Schnepp. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Man, I, I just want to throw this in. Like, We're not going to talk about it today, but I, re I was reading early this morning. I started crying because it was such a, a beautiful story. Michael Bay like <laughs> saved this little pretty like dog that's got epilepsy named Freya and cast cast the dog in Transformers the last night and then got her adopted. Isn't that that's amazing? really nice. It, it is, is a nice story. It is a nice story. Also here, Mark Ellis. Mark, what do you think? What I've you said think nothing but nice things about Michael Bay and his kick-ass movie, 13 Hours, and now he adopted a dog, and that dog is sponsored by Bud Light. It's the new Spuds <laughs> McKenzie. <laughs> All right, now before we move on, I want to let you guys know about our contest that we're doing over at Complex. It's for Comic-Con this year. You guys can win a free trip to Comic-Con. Uh, and I'm going to get the details in just a little second. Our internet has been shit. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the details what? are, Christian. Tell me. Well, uh, well, I'm glad you asked. All right. What do you got? It's be Hey, didn't see you guys there. You can win a trip to Comic-Con. Two people get badges, and you get hotel accommodations, and you get airfare, and they're even going to throw a little spending money your way. Now, if you want to use it to buy me dinner at Fox Sports <laughs> Grill, who am I to say no to something as nice as that? Who and can you can enter? win by entering. Uh, you can click the link in this vid's description, or you can go to quieter.com, the contest on that page as well. I'm not sure exactly what you have to do. you got to follow the link when you get to the end of the rainbow. We'll see you there. Well, there you go. So make sure you guys go and apply. That is a great contest, especially the fact that Comic Con, year in, year out, the tickets are sold out. Fans can't get to go. I, I have to really be get nice into thing. a line, like a waiting list to get into another waiting list yeah. to go. So it's it is really so hard. hard. To get you got to get up at like 8 a.m. on some random Saturday in December and hope that you're one of the first yeah. 20,000 people. It's impossible unless you're this good looking. All right, <laughs> Ashley, let's get to the topics that we're going to cover here today. All right. Universal has released the newest trailer for Jason Bourne starring Matt Damon with Julia Stiles' Nikki character also heavily featured. Bourne is a man who can never know peace who is once again on a mission to dismantle this secret organization churning out assassins. The new program a la Treadstone is called Iron Hand and looks to be even worse than before. Damon is joined by Alicia Vikander, Vincent Cassell, and Tommy Lee Jones while Julia Stiles reprises her role in the series. Frank Marshall produces with the film written and directed by Paul Greengrass. Jason Bourne hits theaters on July 29th. Christian, thoughts on the new trailer for Jason Bourne? I'm excited. Looks exactly like I want it to. They're showing a little bit more now with the action, a little bit more into the story, but it's a 30-second trailer, so you're going to get a little bit more action. A little upset I didn't get to see my girl Alicia Vikander, but that's okay. We'll see more of her as the movie comes out. But I felt the Bourne feel. They even threw in the little Moby tune in there to let you know that it's, it is the theme for sure, and that he's getting back into it. Now he's going head-to-head -head with Tommy Lee Jones. Julia Stiles is going to help him out. I, it felt like it, it definitely felt like there's been some years past, mm -hmm. but it felt like it left off exactly where we wanted it to be. So yeah, it definitely felt like. I, I mean, I'm really glad that uh, that Greengrass returned too because he's got this specific kind of style that he's applied to the Born Identity, yeah. and, and and so it has that like handheld action and. It just had that feeling. You always have to have some guy like, oh, my God, it's Jason Bourne. You know, you have to have someone say that. <laughs> and you see some handheld stuff. A car flips. A dude's jumping. It's like all those things are part of the Bourne, Bourne identity. <laughs> Would have loved to have been at the casting that day when there's, there's a bunch of guys in suits hoping to land the role <laughs> yeah. of the guy yeah. that has to rip off his glasses yeah. and be like, my God, that's Jason Bourne. Right. Like, that's a cool line to get to deliver yeah. in the theater. And be nervous and weird, yet, you know, it works. Like, right? he knows more. Like, everybody else just on their computers, like, right. oh, I'm just doing and work, and then they're like, who the hell is Jason Bourne? Yeah. But this guy knows just how dangerous he is. And if you had any questions about how dangerous Jason Bourne is, just look at the punch. They showed it to us at the Super Bowl. They closed this trailer with it. I love the punch, punch and I love everything about this. The one thing that I'm a little nervous about is are we looking at a uh, second Death Star situation with this with this Iron Fist or whatever the name of the new project mm. is? Hand. It's like, did you learn nothing from Treads? 
Stone, did you learn that this just isn't going to work, whether it's with whether it's with Jason Bourne or with Jeremy Renner's character, right. whoever the hell he was? Like, maybe you guys should just stop engineering this stuff, or is this something that was already going on in the previous Bourne movies? Because it seems a little silly for the government right. to be like, hey, we remember that one guy? We're pretty sure he's dead, but we don't really know where he is. Let's go ahead and restart a program like that. I can understand the, being nervous about that, but I, I don't think it's going to be the case because it's been a while to get both Greengrass and Damon aboard, mm. and I don't think they were just going to sign on to any silly little story. They wanted to do the story that counts. I, the concern is valid, for sure, sure. but I just don't think it's going to happen. I think that they yeah. have worked on it. I think there's going to be a reason for it, and I do think it's going to really continue the story that we saw. It certainly felt like it in the trailer. Well, when you think about it, it's like it's they dismantled Spectre, but yet there's a different organization. So I'm sure whatever the organization that was making those super soldiers that had to take the three pills every day, like I think I don't think that's Iron Hand is my guess. It'll be some other kind of like dark ops. You know? All I know is that I got to wait seven more weeks for this thing <laughs> and I am ready to go. Yeah. All right. Let's hit uh, story number two. Original Captain America, the first Avenger, and Avengers composer Alan Silvestri took to his website yesterday to announce that he would be returning to score both Avengers Infinity War films. Silvestri's main theme for the Avengers is one of the more memorable themes for fans, which has been reused in a number of subsequent Marvel movies. His other notable credits include Back to the Future, <laughs> Predator, Forrest Gump, and The Polar Express. Silvestri has received Academy Award nominations for Forrest Gump and The Polar Express. For the Avengers sequel, Joss Whedon worked with MCU regular Brian Tyler, who also composed for Iron Man 3 and Thor The Dark World, and then brought in Danny Elfman to help craft a theme. With the two-part Avengers Infinity War saga, Sylvester is being brought back into the fold to work some more magic on the biggest Marvel movies yet. Production on the two Infinity War movies is set to begin in November. You're cleaning your computer <laughs> up this year in Atlanta, Georgia, with both movies being shot back to back. Schnepp, are you happy to hear Alan Silvestri is coming back to score Avengers? Yeah, somebody get that guy in a space suit and he's going to die out there. Um, <laughs> I'm really happy. I think, you know, I mean, I had Christian hum the, the, the theme song of Avengers. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, that's right. Now that's I remember it. it. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. Come on. Bah, 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 bah. Everybody. That is yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Come on, you so, mother of. No, no, I got no. it. Um, right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad he's coming back. <laughs> you know, seeing that still, though, really gets me uh, excited about Guardians 2, and it gets me mm -hmm. really jammed up for, like, man, Infinity Wars, everyone's going to be in outer space floating around. It's it's going to be cool, so we need music for it, so I'm happy Alan's back. <laughs> I, I am, to be honest, I think this is a big story. I don't think people realize how big of a story this is. Um, when well, Who's the dude that that was together with uh, Foggy before they, they split now? Hor um, Perlmutter. Perlmutter. Thank okay. you. Perlmutter. So Perlmutter now doing right here. Yep. Now, this is, I, I really do believe that once Perlmutter kind of went to just do TV, because he was notoriously uh, cheap, we'll say, is what they were saying. Uh, Kevin Feige, to me, really listened, because there was a bit of an outcry. The fact that you, one of the things you go back in time, whether it's Danny Elfman's 1989 Batman theme, John Williams' Superman theme, mm -hmm. like or it, or even not necessarily a superhero, but like an Indiana Jones, it's something that you recognize when you hear it, and you're like, oh, that's the theme to this. Mm -hmm. And the Marvel movies have been missing that. Yeah. We haven't had a lot of that. The Avengers one popped. It felt that way. Like when you first when you hear it in the in the first Avengers movie, it worked. And the Captain America, it worked. But then because they were kind of, they, the, what a lot of people don't realize is that you have to pay the composer a little bit more the next time, and mm -hmm. they, they started using new composers. Now, Brian Tyler was really good for a lot of these things, and he used him for a lot of different things, and he kind of repeated, but he changed up tones. But the Avengers, uh, Ultron, they used Danny Elfman, um, and then also Captain America in Winter Soldier, you heard the theme from Alan Silvestri like just a second. Mm. But now I think that Kevin Feige realizes that you kind of need that too. And I think that that's why you're bringing Sylvester back is not only will you get, because Sylvester did Winter Soldier, so you'll get Captain America's theme back. You'll get the, the Avengers theme back. I think it's a really good move and a smart move because it's brand recognition. It, you, it, there's a feeling. Music is so completely underrated in films. You don't realize how much, I mean, like again, going over those credits that Ashley read, Back to the Future, I mean, all these movies, Predator, you hear them, you know them. Like we do contests sometimes when you play it up, oh, I know that right totally. away. 
I believe that this is a smart move. They can continue. They should continue to do this with keep one composer on the stretch of movies. Bum bum bum. Dun 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 dun. Yeah. Back to the Future. Much more recognizable than anything I've ever seen in a Marvel movie. But it's nice to have Alan Silvestri back. I do look back, and I can't I can't conjure in my head how any of the Marvel film scores sound in particular. But I always know I'm enjoying them while I'm in there, and I I I like every one of these things. So if Alan Silvestri is going to be the guy in charge of that, as he has been in some movies past, I think it's a great. Great call. It's a very interesting point you bring up, Christian, about Marvel spending money on the music, whether it's with a composer or just getting songs for the soundtrack. Because sometimes, like, ah, oh, we don't really want to fork over all that money for all these ACDC songs or all these Black Sabbath tunes. It's smart to get music at the forefront because it is a huge part of the movie going experience. Whether you're an idiot like me and you can't remember all the scores necessarily, but they are huge, not just with like the theme music, but also just kind of letting us know what the tone is, what the Right. The mood of the scene is so Alan Silvestri is a genius at it, so he's a credit to uh, uh, Infinity War 1 and 2. Okay, so that those are the topics that we were going to cover that were in the news today, but now we really wanted to get to the Twitter questions. You guys have been submitting questions either today or you had done it throughout the week at Collider Video, at Ashley Mova. Ashley's going through some. We're just going to do a fan kind of Q&A today. And by the way, it can be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be just about movies. If you want it to be, you want to do behind the scenes stuff, go for Ooh. it. Ashley, what do you got? Joe Flaherty writes, what movie will make more money, Warcraft or Assassin's Creed? Also, thoughts on those J.K. Simmons pictures? Of oh, him man. all jacked up yeah, working out. Do we need fuck. a jacked uh, Gordon? I, I think he's just working out. and they, I mean, I think they're going to have Gordon just wearing a suit. You're never going to see him, like, ripped and stuff like that. That's just J.K. Simmons, like, beefing up on his own. It's like people are taking – and the, the, those photos are from long ago. They're not from – they're not recent. He oh, was okay. shredded. Yeah, How long yeah. ago were they? Because he's got the beard, so I thought yeah, maybe he's, he's going out like a, a, yeah. a, a, a retirement David Letterman beard to play Commissioner yeah. Gordon. No, they I just – I just saw a picture of him. He's got – he's just got a full, you know, stash. He looks like, you know, he's got the Gordon stash and, you know, probably slap a wig on him or something, you know. But uh, what was the other one besides the the jacked up like um, so, uh, more, Warcraft more, more, or Warcraft Roberto likes to say brolicked. He's, yeah. like, brolicked. He's like super ripped. What's the other Warcraft one? Warcraft or um, Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed, Creed is going to make, make way more money, I think. I mean, I, th I just think uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Warcraft. So who, who's to say? I know it's cleaning up. You know, overseas. Overseas. Okay, look if we're if we're saying worldwide box office. I think Warcraft is going to beat Assassin's Creed. If we're saying domestic, I think Assassin's Creed yeah. edges out Warcraft, although it's got a tough task because it's going up at Christmas time when a lot of movies come out, in particular a movie named Rogue One that's going to be coming out the week before. You also have Passengers the same week mm. as Assassin's Creed, which might lend some competition depending on how the trailers are, what the tone and the mood of that film is. I'm sure there's going to be some family-friendly fare that comes out around the holiday season, so it's not going to have an easy time making a lot of money but neither is Warcraft domestically because there's a lot of movies coming out even this week Warcraft has to go up against The Conjuring 2 which is which everybody loved The Conjuring yes. most people did so that's going to do well and then Now You See Me 2 which was a surprise hit of the box office as well so either one I don't think is going to make so much money that we're like sweet video game movies are now the most profitable things out there but they can help turn the tide I think Assassin's Creed edges out Warcraft domestically Warcraft crushes it internationally I think internationally is a good call as far as um, Warcraft goes, but I still think that Assassin's Creed is going to win overall. I think because, and this, I have, you think internationally too. I think so. Okay, but I, but it's only because I think, and I could be completely wrong on this. I think it's going to be received better by fans and critics. Mm. I think that Assassin's Creed to me is going to turn out to be the movie that that, that there's more unity on the opinion than this particular movie. And I also think that internationally, yeah, it, 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 this is a large audience, and it's going to do really well, I think, overseas for sure. I don't think it's going to do so great here, Warcraft, that is. But Assassin's Creed, I don't know. There's something about it. Um, and I think it's got a little bit more star power with Fassbender in the role. Um, not necessarily that he sells movies, but I think right. it's still something that he having him out there does does help the movie a bit, if it's a, if it's indeed a, a really great movie. Someone of that talent to add to a, a already good movie. But we'll see. But I would not be surprised if you're right, and, and it, it internationally, Warcraft does better overall. Uh, fun fact, I was on the road when the trailer for Assassin's Creed dropped. Still have not seen it. Did you guys like it? 
With the, the, what, the trailer the for Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, still haven't seen it. Still haven't seen it. I, yeah, I, I it thought it had the goofiest soundtrack you could possibly the imagine. Kanye to thing it. Was, was unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, it, it kind of ruined the trailer. But the me. movie looks good. The or, or, you, or you like the visuals? Play it with some other music. Yeah, and it, the visuals look okay. I mean, maybe I, like an Alan Silvestri score for you. Um, boy, I would want to hear some. I want to hear some oh, weird electronic. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah oh. no, I don't know. Um, anything but what they were playing. It felt just so out, out of place. Um, yeah, I, I certainly hope the people who played the game Warcraft go out to see the movie Warcraft and just give it a oh, shot, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, you still have, like, there's millions and millions and millions of people that played Warcraft, so they're going to want to see the yeah. movie. Opening weekend, I'm saying Warcraft, maybe if they hit 50 to 60, I think they'll be very happy with that yeah. number. Sure. I, they, I think probably it's going to land around the, the high 40s, mm. but if you can crack 50, I think that's going to be a win for the studio. Yeah, I, I was originally thinking it would make 60, but then I realized it was opening against Conjuring 2. I think Now yeah. You See Me is going to fail. I, that's my guess, yeah. but, you know, All right. number seat, number two, that is. <laughs> What's next? James Thomas Welsh writes, are there any actors whose entire filmography you've seen? Entire filmography. Ah, oh, man. I mean, I've seen all of the Chucky movies. So I've seen all, <laughs> all of Chucky's filmography. Okay, honey, we've talked about this 10 yeah. times. Chucky well, is not a real human you being. You can He's kind not of count him as a Jason, Freddy, <laughs> Chucky. They're, they're actors. That's a good point. I, well, I haven't seen every Robert Englund movie. But I've seen all the Nightmare on Elm Street. I've seen all the Freddy movies. You know what actor I might have seen every one of his movies Which is uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Every one? I, I think I've it. seen every Daniel Radcliffe I movie. I so. I've seen The Potters. I've seen Woman in Black. Comedy that he did. I saw the. Year. I haven't seen the Farting Corpse one. One of the one that he just did. He did that romantic comedy one uh, last year. That I missed. Did you one. see yeah. when he was you've, in Extras with Ricky some. Gervais? Uh, no, that's a TV show. Yeah, it still so. counts. And I so saw Now You See Me Too. I, all of filmography. I'd say I probably I might have seen all of uh, most of DiCaprio's movies. I think probably all of them. You seen uh, you seen uh, the Basketball Diaries? Yeah. Seen What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Yes. Seen, uh, that's all I got. Yeah, um, I, I have. Yeah. Uh, Jim Carrey, uh, I think I've seen most of his movies. Sure. I fell asleep watching the number 23, but other than Ooh, that. Oh, okay. All right, I take it back. I didn't see number 23. Yeah. I would have yeah. seen, I've seen all his comedies, though. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying, Bill Murray, maybe? Because I'm just such a, Chris Farley, but he's in like three movies. Right, right. He had cameos in other movies, but I've seen all those as oh, well. Oh, Eminem. So Farley. I've seen all Eminem's movies. Uh, yes, because he also was in what? One movie. Uh, yeah, funny People. And Funny People. Yeah. yeah. All right, what's next? Aiden Kosick writes, would you guys ever consider doing a merchandise store? Uh, merchandise. I'm, I mean, merchandise. I've done a few. Um, but <laughs> how, can, how can we tell? Yeah. Uh, can you know. not notice the constant schmo stuff on these Wait, shows? Wait, what? That's like, they have a t-shirt shop that you go online and get a schmo thing. Um, I'm wearing this this little Kickstarter one. Well, I mean, we all, I mean, we all wear branded, uh, you know, items. I always wear horror shirts or science fiction t-shirts. Those I just because I like those. Yeah. Um, you know, I like I said, you guys can go and check out Schmo's, uh, you know, merchandise. I'll have a bobblehead available at Comic Con. <laughs> really? Uh, Are you really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. So, you know, I mean, there's you can't a whole undersell bunch of, that. That's amazing. Yeah, I want to like, Josh that bobblehead. bobblehead. Yeah, yeah. I, too. So, I mean, there'll be a bunch of silly stuff. So, I mean, yeah, we're all making merchandise. Well, so, I think know. it's something that Collider will eventually get yeah. into for sure. All right, what's next? Speaking of Comic Con, Pablo writes, "Can you reveal what Collider has in store for San Diego Comic Con?" Well, I can tell you that we're definitely, well, like I said, in the top of the show, we're doing that giveaway, which is pretty awesome, starting off with a bang there. Um, doing our give, doing our uh, meetup that we do every year, yeah. and this year is going to be even more fun because both Schmoes and Collider to, uh, Movie Talk together are going to do one yeah. big meet and greet. Uh, we haven't announced when that's going to be. I know that Dennis has a lot of plans uh, as far as we were trying to setting up rooms. It's still the plans aren't finalized right. yet, but there's a lot in the works. That's what I can say right now. Yeah, we're going to be working a lot during the day. We're going to be yeah. covering Comic Con for right. Collider, for Schmoes, for a bunch of different outlets. But we want to let you guys know if you see one of us walking around, feel free to come up, say hi, give me a high five, give either one of these guys a sloppy, big, wet kiss. They love that <laughs> stuff. So we're going to be happy to see the fans down there. It's one of the reasons why I love going to Comic Con. And if you come up to me and Schnepp, with a shit rat shirt on, uh, I'll give you a free Blu-ray unopened. Um, all right, you can't make claim. How I many can. Blu-rays you gonna One, be walking the first person, around? The first person that comes up. Just to you saying, with. dude. There's a lot of shit. The first, rat the, first the first shit rat fan that comes up. <laughs> there's three shit rat shirt. Fan. Yeah, and shirt. I will also the first person who's wearing a shirt will give them a free Blu-ray too. There you go. One, the first you come person. up to okay, me with a shit I'm rat shirt. Yeah, I am going to ignore you. If you wear the shit rat shirt and then go up to other myself, we are working on another. 
shit rat shirt. I talked yeah. to you about yeah, yeah, that yeah, idea yeah, yeah. that Ellis is going to be in. So. All right, cool. I'm not uh, gonna be a shit rapper. No, you're you're not gonna be doing a shit rapper. No, you're I'm in not. There. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. No, I'm not. You're like be like Dave. <laughs> 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 all, right. all right, what's Christ next? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Hamza writes. Do you think different parts of a movie matter more than others? Like if there's a twist ending, that's all people talk about. I mean, sure. I mean, it. it, it yes, because if. And you have a really good movie up until the last 15 minutes, and the last 15 minutes is garbage. It hurts the movie. Definitely. And the, the reverse of that is a movie could be, you know, all right, I'm, I'm into this, but then the ending is incredible. It changes the whole film. And that, that's also to be said about something in the middle. Like, mm -hmm. there's like, you know, the movie would have been okay hadn't it been for that amazing scene in the middle or the vice versa of that, like the character yeah. direction. Well, that happens a lot. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, that's usually like if we're, if we've all seen a film together and like say Christian loved it, you hated it, and I medium loved it liked it we all right. saw the same film right but there was something that affected us differently and that could have been like i didn't like the ending or that middle part when the, this one thing happened it ruined the rest of the film where someone else was like ah oh, it just seemed that made sense to me so it didn't bother me so i love the movie you know it's like it really is you know for everybody i right? totally weigh the ending of a movie more heavily than i do anything else in the film like you always hear in sports if somebody misses a last second shot and the coach is like that's not what losses the game we could have done a lot of other things sure you could have but you really could have won the game with that last shot right. if you close strong that can make up for a mediocre journey going all the way up there i love godzilla the entire movie but i know right. a lot of people like yeah godzilla was okay and then the last 20 minutes happened and it was great for that 20 right. minutes there's a movie remember the movie the crime game they won like a bunch of oscars yep. i watched that and it's just a ho-hum drama for a long time then the end happens and it's got a little bit of a twist if you haven't seen it right. and that's what everybody's talking about so the ending is much more important to me i love a good opening i love being involved in the movie the whole time if you close strong it can make up for a lot of other flaws all right what's next Jay's Days writes, are you interested in seeing Mike Myers reprise his role as Austin Powers, or do you think the franchise is dead at this point? I, I want to see it. I want to yeah. see it one more time. One yeah. more. I would love to see him play an older type Austin Powers who's handing it off to maybe like three younger stupid agents and like only one of you will get the title of Austin. But you know, it's like <laughs> you, could, you could just add like have a, a, a lot of fresh blood in there. I think... Mike Myers is incredibly funny, and you know he just took a break, a longer break than any of us expected him to. So I would love him to come back and do that. I would be up for it, but I'd be incredibly nervous sure. for it because, it, like the last his last attempt at comedy with the Love Guru Oof. didn't work at all. Granted, he's got a better hold on Austin Powers, and maybe there's a story to tell years later how Austin Powers is kind of held up in this world now. I, yeah, it, it could it could be. I would be excited to see it. I would just be incredibly nervous that it was going to just be terrible. I'm just I'm not attacking you, Shep, but I'm kind of done with the oh, let's have this person reprise their role one more time so they can hand it off to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works very well in movies. Sometimes right. that that does work well, and you can pass the torch and it's fine. I don't want to see Austin Powers pass the torch to a younger schlubby, but thinks he's this great, you know, full of mojo, romantic dude. Unless it's Mike Myers. That's the only guy I want to see be Austin Powers. Even if it's a star like Taron Egerton, who's great as a spy. Yeah, he yeah. could, you know, put on some goofy glasses and a wig. I don't want to see that. I just want to see old Austin Powers try to still be cool with the ladies, solve some hilarious mystery, bring back Elizabeth Hurley. I don't care. I just want to see that. I don't want to see them try to spin off a new franchise out of Austin Powers because I don't think that would sure. work. I see right. what you're saying. I I'm not saying spin a franchise. I'm just saying, like, he could, like, have a bunch of people with yeah. him. Yeah. Or, or spin off a friend. I'm still yeah. buying your bobblehead. <laughs> no, who knows, man. Yeah. Right. I just want to see an awesome Powers 4. Uh, what's next? James Rodriguez writes, if you could live in any movie universe for a month, where would you live? Ooh. Yeah, movie universe. Now, this is a month, boys. This is a month. This isn't like one day, so you got to survive for a month, but it's not like a year, so it's like a extended holiday. I want to be with Alan Silvestri on that stupid <laughs> rock with Ronan the Accuser and Thanos just hanging out. A month? A I solid month. A Man, full month. I, I don't care if I'll get in trouble with this. Boogie Nights for a month. Really? Why not? Well, uh, can for I ask a month. This? What, what role do you want to be? Do you just want to be one of the crew guys? Or do you want to be the guy doing the... Uh, like a, I don't know. Guy guy throwing the firecrackers? I saw, those yeah. parties. Just being at those parties were yeah. amazing. For a month. Pretty crazy. Why not? I think I could survive running away from, from Nazis and, and upset tribes that I stole their idol. I think I could survive in an Indiana Jones world for a month. You give me two months there, probably going to turn up dead in Egypt somewhere. But I think for a month... I could pull yeah, off a month Indiana is Jones. pretty easy. I would like hang out in the Blade Runner world for a month, just like walking along wow. those streets. Really cool atmosphere. 
Yeah. Dope. I mean, I would be tempted to go somewhere where I can like go back and forward in time because you want to get the most out of your month if you're going to go sure. to a movie world or like outer space somewhere like there. So maybe you get to go exploring. Independence Day would be fun. You get to save the world, but you also might die. <laughs> so right. I want to make sure I'm not dead within that first month. The caveat is you can't die. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, that's a nice power to have on top of already <laughs> yeah, getting into month. a movie world. Yeah. I'd let everybody know, I know we had streaming issues, and now it seems to be back up. We are doing all about you guys, Twitter questions. You want to ask movie questions? Go ahead. You want to ask behind-the-scenes questions? Do it. Go and tweet out to Ashley, at Ashley Mover, at Collider Video. Ask your questions, and she's going through them right now. Ashley, what else we got? Christian Joel Ramos writes, with the success of The Jungle Book, is a Lion King remake not too far along? Possibly. I've thought about this. I think that... You know, now that they know that they have kind of mastered this technology, I think it's ripe for it. The only the only thing is that it doesn't have that the Jungle Book had was one human character. It mm -hmm. doesn't have any humans in it. Now they could certainly do it. It'll I don't work. Know if you need a human, we character. don't. Need I, I don't think you need it. But it's but it is it's probably one of the conversations that's being had right. because even you look at Beauty and the Beast, which is also going to have some of that stuff, and it's going to have talking candles and clocks and stuff of that nature, and we'll be fine with that, but you still have Belle. You've got Gaston. So what are you going to do if you don't have any human characters? You certainly can make it work, but I can see the conversation happening. I want to see it. I think it'll be great. I'd love to see stuff yeah. like that happen, and it might be even better than The Jungle Book because we eliminate the human element who usually muck things up. I thought the kid that played Mowgli was fine, but he was my least favorite part of a great film in The Jungle Book. So if you remove that, then you just have the animals walking around talking to each other yeah. that oh would be awesome what if you just took bambi and just made it all that 3d like jungle book technology but just use the actual soundtrack as is and just revoiced it but i mean i'm sorry not revoiced but revisualized mm -hmm. it so you just put in the new like like live action performance capture yeah. effects but you kept the same exact track yeah in the original one that would be pretty incredible Might it would be work too there. Yeah. yeah all right what's next Snap D. Jones Bless writes, you. do you have a movie that shaped your philosophy in everyday life? Ooh. Yeah. What? Yeah. White yeah. men can't jump. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Not, not, it be beyond just the title, but right. you just learn that there is, there, there's, there's various ways to go about uh, solving something that's going on in your life, whether you want to look good and lose, whether you want to look bad and win, about uh, being a teammate, about being loyal to somebody, about being friends, about learning how to handle a relationship with the opposite sex. And it's, it, there's a lot of good life lessons to be learned from White Men Can't Jump. It's a great movie. It is a good movie, I, I, and you really, you, mm -hmm. you're convincing me to see it again. I'm like, man, that movie's deeper than I thought. Oh, and also, if you're a white guy, you should never bet money on the fact that you can dunk, because you probably can't. All right, what's next? <laughs> That's, wait, you guys don't have an answer at all? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Maria G writes, will the Suicide Squad PG-13 include Whispergate? <laughs> Roderick. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. What no, what it, <laughs> stupid question. Um, what it, what it will make, as far as PG thirteen on with on PG thirteen goes on what Suicide Squad. Right. I think that uh, John, it, it who yeah who the understand. hell knows. I don't, I don't <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> don't tell Ashley. I know. <laughs> who the hell knows? <laughs> well, I know. I know. Something. But I'm listen, PG thirteen Suicide Squad. Tell me, I'm, I'm getting afraid. I'm freaking what out right now. Me? I'm freaking out right I'm now. I'm so confused. Ashley's confused. I don't know. He he All right, here we go. So can we get to PG-13? No. Nope. All right. <laughs> He's hiding. You He's know hiding. what it is. Just tell us what Whispergate is. We know. It's nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. So we're going to get into the PG-13. PG-13 as far as Suicide Squad goes. That's the question. That's, that's what... It's you're giving me a look like 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 I know something, <laughs> but I don't know what you're talking about. It's like <laughs> you're giving me some sort of nonverbal communication. <laughs> I don't see that's a word. Is this, that's a word. It looks it looks to me like the stream is down. I again. knew today was gonna be a weird day. I told you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, look, Suicide Squad being PG thirteen, yeah. I'm not that concerned about. It was something that I expected. Would right. have been great if it was rated R. Yes, right. it would have been awesome. I would have been over the moon excited. I totally understand it's PG thirteen. I think you can do enough in a PG thirteen movie to make a very, very great even Suicide Squad movie. What the hell is Whisper Game? Yeah. Um so Whispering yes, is. it is I think that no duh, PG thirteen. I mean we know they're not gonna 
market an R-rated film right now, plus the fact that the Batman v Super, uh, Superman Ultimate Edition hasn't even come out right. yet. So we don't know how fans are going to respond to the... Like, DC. Do we really need burning bodies in a superhero no, movie? It's, it's like, too much of a risk for them right yeah. now to put the rated R movie out. I think it is too. Yeah. So uh, th we don't need it. For this particular movie, we don't need it, and I think everybody knew it was PG-13. Well, let me ask you something. What if the news came out that Suicide Squad was going to be rated R? Would you guys be doing jumping jacks in the street because you're so happy? Or would you say, oh, man, that's a little desperate at DC to be playing off that Deadpool vibe? You know what? I would like. I would react exactly the same way I just reacted to the PG-13 because I haven't seen the movie yet. I'd be like, oh, okay, they're going to push it a little farther. They're going to go with a, a slightly more adult world in this Suicide Squad version. I, you know, I'm still, I can't wait to see the film. It's less than hmm. seven weeks now, right? So I think people would be a little skeptical if they did make it yeah. R-rated. I don't think it's the right move to make it R-rated, but I also don't think it'd be fair to be like, oh, they're just doing that because of Deadpool if they wanted to make it R-rated because a property like Suicide Squad certainly lends itself totally to being R-rated. There is an R-rated Batman movie coming out this year, though, in theaters. That's right. For, for one, one day, day only, yeah. Fathom Events, it's uh, July 25th is Killing when The Joker. Killing yeah. Joke comes out. In the they're going to do like a one-day run in theaters. Hopefully, we get to check it out at Comic-Con. Are, are we, we're going to be at Comic-Con. Is that the day that it, it, it comes out? That's Comic-Con, is Well, no, it? no. They, they might screen it at Comic-Con, which is the no, 21st they are, they and the 24th. Oh, so the and very next And then they'll day. release it to people who aren't lucky enough to go to Comic-Con like we are on the 25th in select theaters around the country. Right on. All right, what's next? Frank Love writes, do you think there's going to be a sequel to The Nice Guys despite poor box office? No. I don't think so. No. I, I know that they wanted to. I know that they had ideas to make it like a whole a whole thing. But there's what they're hoping for is that it kind of catches on, uh, you know, with Blu-ray the same way that Kiss Kiss Bang Bang right. did and, and digitally and uh, even something like a bigger budget movie, but like Edge of Tomorrow caught on with the fans later on. They're hoping for that or even like Kick-Ass or something to where the fans really want to see another one. That's what they're hoping for. I just don't think we're going to get to that. I would level. love to see the nice guys on Netflix for 10 episodes and do it like the Rockford Files, but with, because the thing I liked the most about the nice guys was the back and forth between Gosling and Crow. I right. think they had a great chemistry. I love being in the 70s with them. I love the situations that they got into. You know, so I mean, I'd like to see that. I don't think a, another movie's necessary, though. Yeah, I'd love to see it on Netflix. Uh, I it, it made it, as of right now, it's a little bit under thirty million dollars <laughs> domestically, which I can't imagine it was that cheap to make. So right. they might have taken a little bit of a bath, the right. budget wise. But even though I didn't love the movie like I thought it would, I still liked it a lot. That movie did everything it could possibly do to sell itself to the widest audience possible. Yes, it came out in the summer, so you have a lot of competition, but there was nice guy stuff everywhere. The commercials looked great. Ryan and Gosling, uh, Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe looked like they were having such a great time together promoting the movie. Yeah. So it did everything within its power to get it out to an audience. It's just not a lot of people paid to see it. I wonder how what the next movie that Ryan and Gosling will do. Ryan right, and next? Gosling together. Ethan Canistra <laughs> writes, how many people does it take to make one episode of Movie Talk? Well, it, it depends on the several day. thousand. Yeah, <laughs> a, a legion of of sweaty weirdos are outside right now, uh, making us coffee. That's I mean, not it, no. yeah, it depends. <laughs> Riley will go through a lot of the stories the day before, depending on who the host is, whether it's myself, Ellis, or Dennis. We'll kind of collaborate and and go over the stories that are happening, which we think are the ones that we're going to talk about the next day. And obviously, stories break all the time, and so that it goes through that, and then we send graphics to. Ray, once the stories are ready to go, and Ray starts to come up with all the, the wonderful graphics that you see behind you, and then we do the production meeting, get into the pre-production meeting, and then we're all ready. We're, getting, we're on set, we're doing mic checks, and we have Adam, Cody, Wendy in the back, and Dennis obviously making sure that we don't screw up, and then Riley's over there looking for bloopers and checking his email. So we, uh, we do all of that stuff, it's just some of the, the minor things that we do but there's a lot more to it's it it's like obviously. 12 to 15 people yeah Dude, sometimes you guys 4, can drop the act okay it's what, one so button you? you flip it oh, and we're all not. animatronic like pirates of the caribbean at disneyland uh, right. this is not we're not real people you're yeah, not that, looking at real things right, right now right that's mark's <laughs> philosophy and he's actually the one who ran today's show hence why no one is able to watch it <laughs> uh, sorry guys <laughs> all right what's next Luis e de la pena writes would you ever do a drunk movie talk 
Uh, yeah. I mean, what's different? Every day. Yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Louis yeah. You told me this is my first show. I don't remember any of the rest of them. Yeah. Um, the stream's down. What's a stream? Yeah. This is not water. Yeah, drunk, um, mo drunk movie talks called the Schmoes No Show. It's has got to wait a couple hours. Yeah. yeah. Today yeah. is a, a schmo day, right? Uh, it, well, tomorrow. Well, every day tomorrow. is a schmo day. Every day is a schmo day. Yeah, tomorrow's schmo. There's an we do some drinking. I call it here Schmo Land, is what I always call it. Schmo Land is, is yeah. like the side street. That's a, that'll be opening in like 20 years <laughs> yeah. when you like open the Schmo Land. Schmo I feel Land. like in, in in the the city that is Schmoville, Schmo Land is like the corporate like like that's where the mall is and the Red Robin and stuff like that's that. That's a movie theater is in Schmo Land. People go yeah, people okay. go to see movies. They go shopping in Schmo Land, but they live in Schmoville. Yeah. All right, all right. What's next, <laughs> Andrew? Yeah. Andrew Ciancillo uh, writes, most suspenseful movie. What's funny about that? The I most suspenseful <laughs> movie of all time. You know what? You know what always gets me suspenseful? is uh, is Fatal Attraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just because it's like like every guy, whether you've ever been in that situation or not, you can it, you can see y your your future self making one step in the wrong direction mm. and it leads down that path. Whereas something like misery, like it's like, yeah, it's really suspenseful, right. but I know I'm probably never gonna be tended yeah. to by weird nurse Kathy Bates. Right. I was trying to escape yeah. from a house after you've been like, what is it called? Cobbled or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'd say seven Ooh, yeah. and uh and inception. I think both inception for me. It is a movie like, especially at the very end, where it's like you're like, wait, what? Oh, like you left. Like that's a movie. Like sometimes when a movie teases you mm -hmm. at the, especially at the very end, you're like, well, screw that movie. That one's like, that's how it needed to end. Sure. And so, and it left me in suspense. So that's why I pick Inception, or obviously Seven, because by the time when you get to that scene, what's in the box? You're like, right. well, what's in it? What's just, and then, no, don't open the box. No, don't open the just, box. You're, you're and on the, edge the box of your seat. is open. It's, and it's, yeah, you're bummed yeah. out. Yeah. What was it? I'm not not spoilers. <laughs> yeah, too uh, soon. I, you know, I'm going to throw Conjuring in there because even though it's a horror film, it's very suspenseful. Totally, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of really good horror relies solely on suspense. So, yeah. Speaking of horror, by the way, we launched Collider Nightmares. It was yeah. yesterday. Mr. Schnepp was on there. Riley, Clark Wolf, and Perry Nemiroff. It was a really fun show. I mean, last I checked, there's about twenty thousand of you guys already tuned in. Go check it out. Show the support. It is the horror show that we're doing here now. It is the Collider Nightmares, and it's up right now. It yeah. was uh, it was it uh, trending on uh, on Twitter. You hashtag yeah. Collider Nightmares, and it was like the top fifteen. It was like uh, Bernie Hillary duets or whatever that one was, and there was a couple below that, which on election day means you're doing something right. That's great. Yeah, it's hosted by Clark. We're doing it every Tuesday, so check it out. All right, now I want to switch real quick and get into AMC Rewind. Obviously, brought to you by our friends over at AMC. We go back in time, and we talk about movies that opened 10 years ago and movies that opened 20 years ago. Ashley Mova, what opened? 10 years ago, there was Cars and A Prairie Home Companion, and 20 years ago, The Cable Guy and Mall Flanders. <laughs> I think the one that's going to stand out to most is The Cable Guy. Mm -hmm. um, people love The Cable Guy. I haven't watched it in a long time. I didn't love it. Um, I think it was just obviously, well, people may or may not realize that it was actually Chris Farley originally cast as The Cable Guy and then wow. cast Jim mm -hmm. Carrey. Um, and I remember, I guess maybe because I was such a Jim Carrey fan at the time, and to see this kind of dark switch from him, I didn't like the, I, I wasn't expecting that kind of tone, and I didn't really wind up enjoying it, but I haven't watched it in a long time. I know that people love this movie. It just, for me, it never caught on. Yeah, the movie threw me for a loop the first time I saw it, and I loved it because Jim Carrey was coming off maybe the biggest three movie of anybody's year that anyone's ever had in 1994 because he had Ace Ventura, he right. had The Mask, and he had Dumb and Dumber. Then the next year, he came out with Cable Guy, directed by Ben Stiller. It was a it was a comedy, but it was a very very dark comedy. Go back and watch it. There's a lot of great cameo supporting roles from mm -hmm. people who we now know, like Owen Wilson, Jack Black is in yep. that movie. Obviously, Matthew Broderick. Broderick plays the guy who is. We're going into his apartment to try to rig up the cable, and uh, it just Jim Carrey. That's the first movie where I was like, this guy is not only one of the funniest humans that ever lived, he's a really good actor, and he disappears into roles that mm -hmm. he plays. And that's where you saw the potential for him to do movies like Man on the Moon sure. or like uh, your, one of your favorites, Eternal Sunshine of the Spot yeah. was mine. Yeah, yeah definitely. I yep. absolutely love Cable Guy, and I think it's very underrated because when it came out, Jim Carrey was like this specific kind of comedian, mm -hmm. and he was trying something different. And you're right, it's a very dark comedy, and... It really works. If you haven't seen it, 
especially now it just gets better. The older the older it gets, somehow it just feels like even now it's even more current than it was back then. So if you haven't seen it, like you should re revisit it. I Christian. do. I, think I will you'll revisit really, it for sure. You'll get a kick out of it. It's a beautiful, <laughs> funny, dark film. I'm not a huge Ben Stiller fan. No, um, but me neither. I know. I know. But the thing, the thing is, what I will say is that his directing is is not bad. Mm -hmm. And I've I've Tropic Thunder. I really liked. Um, obviously, Reality Bites. I really liked. I didn't love Walter Mitty, um, but the, but I. Even though I'm not a fan of his, I can acknowledge that the guy's a pretty good filmmaker. I got to go back and, and watch that one. And what was the other one that came out ten years ago? Uh, Cars. Cars. Uh, first one's fine, but speaking uh, of Owen Wilson, yeah. Um, that's it. That's that is rewind again. Brought to you by our friends over at AMC. Now speaking to you about our friends. Guess what today is, Mark? Oh, today is the anniversary of Ghostbusters, what? ladies and gentlemen. Who are you going to call? Man. So the good people over at. Sony sent us a box that is full of Ghostbusters stuff. I don't know what Ghostbusters stuff. This is going to be like a live kind of unboxing. And this is the first time since I've been released, I've been trusted with a sharp object. So Wait, before we... you open it, move it around a little bit. Let people oh, yeah, see it. Yes. Yes. Rotate yeah. it around. Show some what, is it? what is that? Maybe top? It, what is it? What does What's the top on? look like? What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing? Yeah, show what are you, come on. The come bottom. on. There you go. Guess a lot of pressure. There's warning. a warning on here. It's a big orange warning. Like it contains ectoplasmic materials. And you broke whatever's in there. Paranormal entities. A ghost might blow out of this when you open it. For the it. purpose of metaphysical examination. Oh. So uh, we're supposed to exercise caution right. while opening. I, um, yeah. I right. hope it's not haunted. Like, Look out. Building won't be haunted it's gonna, or something. Stuff is going to come blowing out of that, I'm telling you. I want to see a thing. I would not mind getting gooey. Why? Been a minute since I got gooey. That's what she said, yeah. All right. There you go. You're welcome. It's a good promo. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. All right, Wendy has first dibs on whatever's in this box. While anyway. we're young. Uh, oh, I'm sorry you're not enjoying <laughs> the unboxing <laughs> process. What's I the first thing in that world? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Key lime Twinkies. They're still making Twinkies? Key lime, Key lime Twinkies. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, my oh, that's God. Crazy. Guys, what do you got? What do you got? guys, the greatest lunchroom treat of all time in liquid form. Oh, I remember those. I have Show. not seen. <laughs> And a high C ecto cooler. Oh my goodness! Yeah. In literally those? twenty years. I don't even know yeah. what that is. Oh, oh, treat yourself. Have one. It is so well, good. Crazy. Drink a. Oh my uh, drink gosh. One of those. We have some. Stuff. I do. Oh, books. We got some stuff. We got some books for other people to read. Uh, Ghost from our past. We got a Ghostbusters uh, cool. badge there, and then some more. more. Stuff. We have uh, a nail filer, which is thermometer go oh, to you. Bless you. Um, uh, thermometer. <laughs> and then we have a uh, then we have a card says, that says, "Oh, hey, Mark, you have great calf muscles. Enjoy the ecto cooler." <laughs> nice. well, that's really nice of you. That's awesome, man. Ecto cooler yeah. all around. Fantastic. Thank all you. right, <laughs> there you go. Thank you to our friends over at Sony for saying that it is Ghostbusters Day today. Uh, let's get back into some of those Twitter questions, Ashley. What all else right. are they asking? Christopher Roy writes, "When you guys." go to a press screening, do you ever take notes for your reviews? Are you taking my juice? Yeah. He gave it to her and then stole it. Gosh, uh, did giver. you see the look on her face? She was not too enthused. I guess anything no, does I have vodka excited. in it, Ashley doesn't want any. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, Anyways. Yeah. I think Mark just really wants that high C wants echo juice. juice. Yeah. Um, look at him drinking it. Look at him. It's true. You haven't had that in years, have you? Mm. As far as notes go, uh, <laughs> it tastes like a warm summer day. Uh, no, I, I don't. We don't. I think for Ellis and myself, because we have been doing this for like eight to ten years, we know that kind of we kind of bounce ideas off each other. We'll talk a little bit after the movie, but very briefly. But when we sit down, we like to have that kind of organic conversation about what we thought about the movie. Mm -hmm. I take notes as far as inside my head. That's about what, it. Was it the question whether we take notes or not? Yeah. No. Write down notes. No. Yeah. no. Do you ever take notes? Never took notes. No. no I, I mean, I can remember a movie for, you know, at least three days. Yeah, and then that's it. Then, then it starts gone. to be like, ah, what was that again? Right. But so, you know, I mean, especially if I'm going to talk about films like on our shows, I'll see it like a week or two ago. You know, I'm, I can still like recall it. Yeah. But I think it's different, though, too, for obviously for print um, journalists. They, they're, right. You see a lot of them taking notes sure. because it's more about the article as where we can you can you're almost like writing as you're talking about it. So you might have another thought like when we do our spoiler totally. reviews and stuff too. There might be a thought because you, someone else brings something up. Shep says something like, "Oh, you know what? That kind of takes me in this direction of what I thought." Yep. And it brings back thought processes that I that I had while I was watching it. Definitely. So we have a little bit of an advantage because we're constantly talking about it on air. It's where print journalists have their one article. They they write it. They take their notes. So I understand. I just and don't just don't do it with the lights on. Print article. Yeah. Also, usually they're writing it way before other reviews have totally. come out. So they're like, you know, they're putting their they're all into this thing. Like, this is my opinion before anybody else has 
uh, sway over their opinions. Yeah, so. yeah and you know, I, uh, I have yelled at people for using the light to take notes in the theater. I think she was using this, this one was using her cell phone, right? To, and then she was writing the notes. And I'm like, you can't do that. She's like, but I have to review it. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Nobody else is doing that. I'm trying to watch the movie. Yeah, yeah. come on, man. Have yeah. some respect. Um, okay, what's next? <laughs> yeah, throw one of those key, uh, key lime Twinkies over here, son. Okay. Um, Ilja Svetnik writes, do studios ever show trailers to a small group of people before they release them? I'm sure that they do. Yeah, they got to uh, run it by somebody, right? Yeah. You're making a lot of noise over <laughs> All what is them happening? Are like, give They're me like, one, give everyone's me like, one, give, give us one. the Twinkies. Guys, guys <laughs> let's, let's concentrate on the fact that we're talking about these movies here. Uh, everyone's like, a key priorities. lime Twinkie, what yeah, is yeah. that? Yeah. Well, the rest of the crew can wait until we're done doing the program. Will you I just show us the I, inside? I know, what are we doing? Yeah. You got a green, you got like a Wendy's green. Wendy's like, I'm not having it. I'm having those. Now look at that. He's like, give me those Twinkies. Please. Go ahead, answer the question. What are you talking about? Whether people uh, screen a, sure a trailer before, show yeah. a little part. Uh, I'm sure that there's a there's an audience that needs to see the trailer before it actually gets released to the public. But you don't see a lot of it, and I'm sure there's like recuts and reshoots and stuff like that. I'm sure that stuff happens, but you know it, we don't hear about it because it's just the trailer. Right. But these are independent companies a lot of times that are cutting the trailer, so they're not necessarily affiliated with the film, and they get like whatever footage they want to the, the company wants to show in the trailer. Then it's their job to cut it together. Yeah, and I think, I mean, a lot of those trailers are cut internally. I mean, th there's trailers that, you know, trailer houses that actually all they do is cut trailers, mm -hmm. but those are for the producers and the select few, and they're the ones who make the notes on it. It's not like they have, like, trailer screenings for audiences and stuff. Like, hey, give us your notes on the trailers. That never happens. Did you cut your trailer? Yep. Did you show it to anybody before it was, like, released? Or No, I just showed it to the people that, you know, I wanted their opinions, like about five or six people, and I was like, oh, they liked it. It was good. You know, they had one or two notes. Awesome. You know, so it's usually small, very small group of people. All right, what's next? Since we've got so many snacks at the table, Linnea writes, favorite movie snack, and what are some forbidden movie snacks that you should never bring to a cinema? Ooh, nice. Uh, you shouldn't bring, like, meat. Like, he's like, like <laughs> I mean, like, you're like a big burrito. Like, you have a big burrito, and, like, it's you're eating. Smell. It's just right. smell. I mean, and, and someone's around, you bring in, like, yeah. a big bowl of pasta. It's like, come on. You, you know, Has that happened to you? Like, a lot people, of times. Really? <laughs> people bring in, like, full meals. It's wow. like, get the snacks. That we, are had a, uh, we had a dude uh, bring, uh, remember Shawarma guy? Yes. A couple years ago, there was a guy that brought shawarma, and not only is he, he's, he's not only eating shawarma in a movie theater, which is, it's a, it's a pungent dish. <laughs> it's just leaking all over the place. No. It's not the easiest thing in the world to find. So he's right. doing it in the dark. You can literally hear meat hitting oh. the floor. It was not a pleasant experience. That's Stick to rough. the basics. Stick to a nice large popcorn, yeah. a soda. You get some maybe, Twizzlers. Yeah, sure. Snow some caps, M&Ms. That's about it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Don't I bring like a box of Twinkies because when one person opens a the box, then the whole crew <laughs> just, for, that was not my fault. The whole crew <laughs> flocked when they saw a Twinkie box open. It, it, I think there was a nervousness that maybe we were going to eat them all. They were like, don't eat all those key lime Twinkies. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, there was a nervousness. Huh? <laughs> you know what they don't have here anymore? They said, the last time when I was able to see, when I saw Creed, I saw Creed in Philadelphia. And the movie theater they had was great. Dude. They had these little pretzel nuggets with cheese. They don't oh, those sell those so anymore good. out here. Yeah, the Only pretzel East nubs is what I call yeah. them. Yeah. So they still sell them out here. Some yeah, they theaters. do. Where? Yep. Yeah. Where? Yeah. It, it is the best dish because like nachos is a classic movie right. theater kind of thing. But then some guy got the idea. He was like, wait, what if I bought nachos and I bought a soft pretzel and I dipped the pretzel yep. into yeah. the... You know what I've seen him do? What I've seen Christian do? He used to get the pretzels and cheese. He would run through the pretzel mm. so quickly. I'd come in there with my, with my thing of popcorn. He would take popcorn and dip the little kernels into the cheese. Not the kernels, but the actual good. popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a kernel. It's well, a popcorn. Before, kernel. yeah, the popped yeah. one, yes. But definitely. now he's on this Now he's on this new fitness kick. So. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll see what happens with the next <laughs> big one. Right. You, you've brought that memory up. He's like, yeah. I might have well, to rush out to a theater right now. Start dipping that bits, corn. If they had the pretzel bits, right. I'd be uh, yeah. huge. Although right. they have the pretzels, you just have to break them up into smaller things, then they instantly have the nubs. Yeah. There All right, what's next? <laughs> Rodrigo R. writes, what's a great movie you never want to see again? Was uh, a great movie that you never want to see again? <sighs> it's hard to watch 12 Years a Slave again. Yes. It's a great movie, but it, it's, mm, just, it's, that, very, it's very hard to watch. Yeah, you nailed one that's really, yeah. yeah. I, saw, I saw that. It messed me up. I was yeah. like, that's an incredible film. That's not like a repeat viewing. Like, can't wait to see it again on right. Blu-ray. Same thing like, like Schindler's List. Another yeah. great movie that I've seen more than once, but it's just, it's it's very hard to watch the fact that, that humans can do that kind of stuff. That's when you watch that and you know that there are human beings that have done that, that are capable of that. 
It's hard to watch. Uh, act, act of killing. There's a lot of uh, documentaries that are also yeah. about the brutality of uh, humans murdering and hurting other yeah. humans that you don't, don't want to see again. All right, I'll go with a movie. It's not necessarily great, okay? But it's a really well-done movie for what they were going for. And I think it's called Rachel at the Wedding. Is mm -hmm. that the Anne Hathaway one or, or Rachel getting married? Well, one of those two where she plays somebody who's recovering from a tragedy and we're not really sure what her mental balance is. And Anne Hathaway just gives such a great performance being this, it, you, you, she's kind of an outcast from the family, but her right. sister's getting married and she gives a toast and it's really awkward. And the whole movie, you feel like you're a guest at this really awkward weekend where somebody's getting married. So I never want to watch it again, but it was really well done. Over under 30 memes of you holding that Twinkie in your hand. <laughs> you want, I know you're on a health. Yeah. Do you want a bite? No. It's key lime. I'm Somebody turn like Mark into a ghost. Turn him yeah. into Slimer. Is your tongue green. green? Oh, I guess we'll Disgusting. find out in a second. All right, let's take uh, three more. All right. A. Clay writes, most inconsistent actors is one minute. They're great. And the next one, not so much. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, Jennifer Lawrence is on that kick right now coming mm. off of... But that's that's not fair for her other performances. Uh, Jeremy Irons is for me like what? Yeah, check it out. Have you ever seen Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> Get no, me my true. dragons! Where are my dragons? I am the emperor. <laughs> well, De Niro could be somebody too. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, now, but like that for me and Jeremy Irons, incredible actor. I, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I'm not just seeing him in Alfred, but he's been in amazing films. I got a good one. I, I got. I'm, I'm going to throw Nicolas Cage into the ring oh, yeah. where the guy always commits but sometimes it's just so cartoony it'll take you out of the movie but other <laughs> times he is an academy Nicolas Cage yeah. is still an academy award level actor winner He's I'm gonna him. make a bold prediction I think that guy gets nominated for another Oscar fairly soon he's that good I smell a reconnaissance happening for Nicolas Cage nice I'd like to see that all right what's next the Dutch movie guy writes what will be the next commentary maybe finding Nemo Ugh, oh, the man. Dutch. Um, I don't know. Do, do you have anything planned yet? Independence Day. Independence Day. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I like I we're gonna, Independence Day. Aren't we going to do The Room? Oh, we, as, but that's going to be when the disaster artist comes oh, okay, out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called The Masterpiece. It's called The Masterpiece now? I kind of like the fact that it was The Disaster, like disaster Artist. artist. Yeah, I was like, you think much, it's probably Tommy Wiseau's strong Hollywood arm. I think right. he's got, he probably loved any title that was coming his That's way. Right. Anything. Um, <laughs> Independence Day is going to be a fun one because, like, it, it's it's one of those. It, I love that movie, but I'm not going into it like, oh, I hope nobody throws stones at this perfect. Right. Create. It's like I know that there's flaws in it. Yeah. I know it's silly. It's ridiculous. But we're going to have a lot of fun watching that movie. All right, last one. All right, Ethan Canistra writes movies that you've walked out of. Bushwhacked. <laughs> Let's be cops and yeah, yeah let's be cops. Wait, you walked. Out. I, I love let's be cops. I never saw Bushwhack. Uh, Christian and I have a rule where we're allowed to walk out of a movie once a year, um, and I have used that pass <clears throat> on such fare as the first GI Joe. Oh, we got to plug the review. The Rise of you know Cobra. Which one? Um, oh year yeah, one. year one is another Not year, one, um, yeah. and then Sex and the City, two. Brutal. Listen, Ooh. Mark and I absolutely lose it. We start breaking down our review of Sex and the City 2 because we were sitting there and like we never text in the theaters, but like we were both like, we just looked like we were in pain watching the second movie going to review this thing. And then I just see him get up. He said he's going to the bathroom. He gets up and he's gone for a while. And I'm like, unless he's got, you know, bad gas, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so I'm like, I got to check my phone. And all I see on my phone is get out of there, get out of there. And I just <laughs> left. And then we reviewed the movie and you just see us, we, we start crying. So if you got, go back into the archives and look at Sex in the City 2 over at Schmoes. It's, it's, it's one of the, we break down and lose it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't toot our own horn that often, but he's got a great line in that review. And I have one that's pretty good as, as well. So you, nice. you should check this that one? review out. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. great one. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> before we sign off here, thank you for everybody who submitted questions today. A uh, little thing happening. Well, something happened happen tomorrow on this show Andy Signore is going to be a guest on the on Movie Talk. What? He's coming in a Movie Talk tomorrow and we're going to be talking about movie news obviously too. And Andy is a good friend of the show, but I can't wait to shut his mouth. I don't know if there's anyone that talks more than he does with Schmodown this week on Friday. Uh he just I didn't even want to face a guy. I was like, I was more about like just me and you doing the team thing, kind of concentrating on other people. And he just, oh, I want to be the Schmoes. I want to beat him. I want to beat the Schmoes. <laughs> the Schmoes is screen junkies. Then why did you reach out to me? Why did you reach out to me that you wanted to be on this show? And then you're like, oh, he wants me to help boost ratings. I'm Andy. Blah, 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 blah. No, you don't. 
I have the tweet. And then if you want to go and see the history of everything else that happened with movie, uh, how a uh, movie fight, oh, it won't work. I don't think it'll work as a full-time show. No, it'll try. Just do it, do it, do it. Oh, I need a producer. How about Ken Napsok? He's good. Oh, okay, okay. How about, how about JT? <laughs> hey, he's a good engineer. Well, I need an engineer. I need an engineer. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> all of these things happen, and it's all going to be settled because when it comes to the Schmodown and movie trivia, it's about if you say, who starred in seven? You go, Paulie Shore. <laughs> Wrong. But in movie fights, if you like, Pauly Shore is a better, if Dan says, Pauly Shore is better than John McClane. And I give you all of the reasons why John McClane was better character than Pauly Shore in jury duty. If Andy doesn't feel like he wants to vote for you that day, you lose. So, yeah, you're saying that he doesn't have the gavel when he comes in here. He's not what can the executive he do? making. He's got to have recall on the spot, which is why I trust Christian Harwap, who I have seen in the heat of battle, come to play when it's crunch time, defeat Andy Senor. I'm not worried about Christian on Friday. I'm worried about Christian tomorrow because between dealing with Twinkie Gate today and then having yeah. Andy on here tomorrow, which is going to be the tougher hosting duty for you? I don't I mean, Look, what I want to do, and we'll see, because Andy's always a wild card. As Man, far as I like, wish I was on the show tomorrow. The only, I, I was going to be on it, but only, I got to go The only thing town, I want him so. to do, I just Damn. want it to be able to talk movies until it's time to talk about Schmodown. That's all I'm asking. I just want to be able to talk because the fans want to hear about movie news. And they right. want to hear yip yapping, yap, yap, yap. And then out of nowhere, he gets into a fit. Oh, this is tough. Dan gets the point. No, it's not that. It's not that. <laughs> Take it easy. We're talking about something else. Um, anyway, so uh, he did Dan, mention something about Dan. I watched that little uh, smack talk yesterday. He said something about Dan. He, of course he did. I mean, but that's all he talks about in his sleep. He's just like, oh, who's he going up against? Oh, he's got to win. Dan gets the point. Take it easy. Relax. <laughs> All right, but that happens tomorrow. He's going to be on. And then on Friday, obviously, he and I go head-to-head -head in the Schmodown. So make sure you check that out. I'd like to thank the panel here today. First of all, John Schnepp, where can they find you? Uh, you're going to find me in Metropolis, Illinois tomorrow. And uh, for the rest of the weekend, for the Superman celebration that happens once a year, uh, me and Holly Payne are going to be special guests there. So you can buy our film, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened in Metropolis, Illinois. We'll be there in person or go to tdoslwh.com and check it out. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. And please, if you're around the Chicago area, make the trek to Metropolis, Illinois this weekend. It'll be fun. And all the Jimmy Olsons will be there. So I can't wait to get a picture with all of them. All the Jimmy Olsons. All, everyone who's ever been a Jimmy Olsen is going to be there. Wow. Mark Ellis, right. where can they find you eating Twinkies on the side of a road? Well, Christian, it will be on the side of a road in Boston. That's right. I may be a Southern jet, but my family hails from Beantown, so I'm so excited to be at the Comedy Club. Laugh Boston Thursday through Saturday. Then maybe I'll swing up to Watertown, go by Ellis Pond, where my family used to be ice cutters. Did you nice. know that, Ashley? What is an ice cutter? It was something that was needed before refrigeration. Uh -huh. It was like you'd have to remember Rocky did that in the very first uh, oh Stallone would be like, yeah, you think they the ice up the tree, like, you know, walking up the that. stairs with the big chunks of ice. <laughs> Ashley Mova, where can they find you? You guys can find me not cutting ice on Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Mova. Happy Wednesday, guys. Um, I like. First of all, I was going to say, guys, we know that this stream was kind of rough for you today. <laughs> It'll get better tomorrow. What I love is someone goes, how about you apologize for the stream? <laughs> wow. How do we do it? What do we do? <laughs> hey, let's just do it. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. I am sorry. For stream. We're sorry. No, we're not. We're not sorry. Whisper again. We're not sorry. Peace out. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.